So racket number two, bidding wars are cooling off. How to prepare for a shift in the market. This is an Inman article. We will link it up. Nicole, before we get into the 10 uh, preparations that mm -hmm. you can do yes. for a shifting market, mm -hmm. we'll comment on each one of them. Are you feeling a shift mm -hmm. in this market right now? Are you feeling it just boots on the ground w yeah. with, with, your, with your deals? I, I, 100% feeling a shift. I think though where we're seeing the shift the most is I think we've just capped out on prices. Yeah. And I think the ones that are not getting, I think there are still 100% multiple offers. I think there's tons of showings. I think things are but, selling quickly. But I do think that things are slowing mostly because sellers are still thinking that they can push the envelope and the ones that are pushing it beyond the number that we've already they, sort they of pushed hit. pushed too far. It's, you're, you're falling and, way too short. And our agents on the team are saying, hey, you know, we're not seeing as many like 20 offers on a property. Great, well-priced, well-marketed, well-executed plans are going to receive tons of offers in this market. There's still, this is still a seller's market. 100%. Prices are not going anywhere anytime soon. But I am seeing early signs of a different market moving forward. One of the biggest signs for us here locally with our team was the fact that we had like eight open houses this weekend. I think that's the most in any weekend in 15 months. Open houses means the property didn't sell the week before and the open house was canceled. Right. Open houses means properties aren't selling in the first seven days. They're taking two, three weeks. Right. Open houses mean I need more buyers. I right. need more activity. Right. We're seeing open houses across the board. Love to hear if you're seeing the same in your market start to expand. Right. Okay. Number one reason, uh, number one thing to do to prepare for this shifting market is incubate, incubate, incubate. Meaning Stay in touch with all the people over the last 15 months that didn't buy, that didn't sell, mm -hmm. that have shown an interest in real estate. Dive in deep and continue to have these conversations. Don't think because they're worn out and they're taking a break that they don't need relevant information about right. your market. Right. So, so jump in there. What do you, what do you think about that one? Stay no, in touch. I, I think, I, I, I think staying in touch is the biggest thing. I think that there were a lot of buyers that, um, probably, you know, four, three, four months ago, I have a few that were like, I'm out, I'm out until this slows down. I don't need to move. I have a rental. Like I'm, I'm out until it slows down. So obviously the right time to sort of hop them back in. Number two thing to do, buyers may have longer decision times. Okay. So you don't have to feel in a panic. We are seeing more inventory come on this market. Yep. Uh, number three, more in-person showings. Hmm. We just talked about that a little bit with the, mm -hmm. um, with the security cameras as well. But just like, timing. I think as an expert in your marketplace, as an agent who should be doing their job and knowing their market better than anybody, mm -hmm. going to showings as often as you possibly can is a smart idea in a shifting market because you're going to hear what the buyers are, are talking mm -hmm. about, what the, you know, what the feedback uh, from from sellers is and you're going to meet other agents and you're going to be able to get that ground floor feeling of the market by being at showings. Hmm. Okay. So I think, I think you should be at these more in-person showings, but, but they're saying, Hey, not, up for the buyer. an out of town buyer yeah. now doesn't have to do FaceTime. They're going to have time to, Hey, I can get there on Friday. This property is not going to sell in the next three days. Right. I guess what's the most important thing here though, too, is, is agents that are heavy, li like listing agents. I mean, this is the time to really start having those conversations with your sellers during the listing that, Hey, things are going to take a little longer. Don't Show them get, examples. Don't get nervous that it doesn't sell the first week. It's okay to have an open house. Like this yep. is because that's, you will be fired and they will be so angry at you if you're not preparing them for this shift because all they've heard up to this point is multiple offers over list price in three minutes. Know your market. What happened the last six months isn't going to be the next six months. Right. So start to see these trends in your local market early uh, before everybody else. Number four, return of the tire kickers. We're Love talking about open them. houses. You're going to see more and more tire kickers now that are showing up at these open houses, especially pricing what Nicole's talking about, educating on them. Hey, you have a great opportunity with the past comps, but look at three examples here where they went out too high. They thought the price was going to continue to accelerate. And then they sat on the market for 21 days and they got less than I thought they would have gotten if they just went out at this price. Right. So here's the price. Let's go get that record sale. Right. But let's make sure we have buyers that are still out there competing. If we can't get 20 offers, let's go get four because we picked the right price to present the property. Right. 
Um, I think what'll be interesting too, and I'm sort of going off on the side here because there was another article that we saw in Inman about people that are in these multiple offer situations are like bailing out. They're getting cold feet. So I think that this is really going to be a great time too because buyers have a little bit more time. Again, educate your sellers on the process. But I really think that this coming fall, we're going to see a lot more deals staying together, which I mean is always what you I want. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. No, that's, that's true. Anyway. Prep for sale. So number six, prep for sale. So, you know, you can't just take crappy photos agents and slap a property on. If you're a consumer, you want an agent that's got a detailed marketing plan that they are that are they can prove to you that they're going to execute in this market. If you're going to be on the market for three weeks, that seems like an eternity compared to what we saw the last six months. If properties aren't selling in 72 hours. What are you going to do to get the attention that my property and home deserves over the next 21 days? I think, though, it's also important, um, too, though, that like you're saying, though, buyers staging are- Staging matters more. Oh, well, I, I, honestly, staging has always mattered more, always has mattered yeah, more. I but mean, it we, matters we've more talked, now in this scenario. Of course. I mean, all of it matters more. I do think, though, too, like because they are taking a little bit longer, though, too, I think these listing agents need to continue to cultivate the relationship with the buyer's agent. Stay in touch. Ask them where they are in the process. Because again, I can't tell you how many times I'm getting feedback where they're like, they love the home, but have maybe four more homes to see. They, again, they now have the time to take them all in. Number seven, longer marketing times. Just kind of spoke about yep. that with the prep for sale. Yep. Uh, number eight, buyers turned sellers who overpaid. Buyers now turning into sellers mm -hmm. who overpaid. That's going to be a tough one. You know, if you overpaid in this market and created your own bubble and now you need to sell, uh, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out I for you. I don't know how that's going to work out either. Number nine, contract terms. Okay, so... Uh, this is another area where a armchair experts surrounding a buyer or a seller often get it plain wrong. Most haven't read a current real estate contract and related forms. Yeah. So, you know, you're hearing, Hey, this worked out for me that, you know, they did three deals in their whole life. It, it, get with an expert. That's going to really position your contract terms to accomplish your goal. Right. Uh, number 10, the state of the real estate market. This is a big one. This is what I'm talking about. Going to showings knowing your numbers, seeing trends. I got on our radio show on Saturday and I said, guys, uh, you know, listeners out there in radio land, I said, in March, April, and May last year, I told you this is going to be the biggest, I said it before it happened, the biggest opportunity for sellers in our state than we've seen in 15 years. I was ahead of the curve when I said that. And I got on Saturday's show and I said, I'm gonna be ahead of the curve again. The market you saw in the last six months is going to be different over the next six months. Prices are not falling off a cliff, but- They're not increasing. Th but they're not increasing. Right. And your ability to have a ridiculous amount of offers has certainly decreased. Can you still capture that today? Yes. Yes. But is it less likely than it was in April? absolutely in our market it is. I'm already seeing those early signs. If you know your market, you know the numbers better than anybody. You should be studying this every day. You should be studying the hot sheet like Nicole White does every single day. Looking, You're looking for that flip for us? I am. Nicole White's looking for a flip right now for us. Uh, you should be studying the you know price per square foot, the days on market, the showings per listing, mm -hmm. the months of inventory, mm -hmm. the median price, the average price in your market, in categories, single family, condos, right? Four bedrooms. You should know all of this better than anybody. And you should be able to regurgitate that to both buyers, sellers, and investors. I think that's the most important thing for agents to pick up well, on this Well, 100%. I, I think what's the most important here too, especially if you're like a new agent that just sort of came into the market in 2021, I think it's really important for you to probably sit down with like a seasons agent that's been in the market for a while. Because again, what we're seeing now, even though it's maybe slowed a tad, is still like off the chain good. So if you have sellers that are like, we've only had 25 showings, be like, yeah, well, like 18 months ago, you would have only had seven. So I do think that it's important to, to again, if you're, if you haven't been in the market long enough to certainly hook up with somebody that has so that you too, because I'm sure these agents are getting nervous too, right? Like, why am I able to show this house? Or there's, their buyers are probably like, it's been in the market for eight days. There's something yeah. wrong with it. You know, I, it's all like, again, like you're saying, you, you really 
really do need to know the information because everyone's going to be worried, just like they were six months ago with Absolutely. multiple offers. Um, th th this is your job to be the educator. Right. Okay. You're not yeah. a door opener. You're an educator. For sure. And if you don't know the goods, if you don't know it better than anybody, how can you educate? Yeah. It's a lengthy article. We'll link it up. I, I think there's a lot of value in that. For sure. Uh, so, so check that out. <laughs>